Cashflow Diary Podcast, episode 590. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Cashflow Diary Podcast, the podcast that teaches you insider tips, tactics, and strategies for creating leverage streams of cash flow into your life. Learn from top performing entrepreneurs, business owners, investors, and thought leaders from across the globe as they share their secrets to success. Like what you learn on this and other Cash Flow Diary podcast episodes? Go to learninvestingnow.com and sign up to receive powerful tips and information that will help you succeed as an entrepreneur and investor. Now, here's your host, investor, entrepreneur, business owner, educator, speaker, author, and master facilitator of Robert Kiyosaki's Cash Flow Game, Jay Massey. Hey guys. Uh, hopefully you guys are doing well. Things are going well. Some of you are excited. I know uh, <laughs> some of the students today were talking about how they were able to get uh, not only their first, but possibly their first, second, and third units. Uh, and there's been a lot of conversation going on um, inside of the Cash Flow Diary communities today. So it's been pretty exciting to be a part of. It's exciting to see. It's exciting to do all of those things and uh, and more. So, um, all right. Uh, so for those of you who are here right now, here, do me a favor. If this is your first time uh, being here, do me a favor. Give me a good old number one in the chat. Uh, and I actually, I also have to talk to the, our, our staff is there inside the chat, the Cash Flow Diary individuals. You've got, I believe it's Megan as well as Stephanie today who are there to assist you because I need one more thing. You may not have today's worksheet. If you don't have today's worksheet, I need three words in the chat. They are short term, is that short term rentals? No, it's actually four. Short term rentals rock. That's what we need to go ahead and put in the chat if you would. Short-term rentals rock. So, um, and let me talk to to Stephanie and Megan real fast so that they just know, guys, so that you know, uh, for whatever reason, the on my screen, the, 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 the comments aren't here. So I'm gonna need you guys to get my attention so that I can make sure to respond and get the questions uh, that are there because we want to make sure every one of your questions gets answered as we go through, but right now, Short-term rentals rock is what you need to be typing in the chat because if you do not have, let me show you. This is, well, can you, you can't really see that, can you? Can you, does that work? If you don't have this, <laughs> if you don't have this, is something that looks like this. It's a worksheet that looks like that. It's got a triangle at the top and a, and a square thingy at the bottom. If you don't have that, you don't have what you need for today's homework. And for those of you, who have been hanging out with us for a little while and playing along at home, so to speak, and you were trying to make sure you qualify for the giveaways, not only do you know that you need the homework, you know you've got to complete the homework, and you know you have to turn in uh, the homework as well. Part of that homework is, well, following along over the next couple of days uh, so that you have all of the answers to the information in the blanks and whatnot, but also so that you learn. Uh, because at the end of the day, if you don't learn anything, <laughs> was it worth it? I don't think so. Uh, that's kind of how I feel anyway. So uh, I see a number of you here. I see Jason and Shelly and Shakir. I think I said that correctly. If I didn't, I'm sorry. Uh, oh, is that Shan Shan Shanice? I'm trying, <laughs> doing the best I can. Uh, Olympia, Christina, and, and, and Ruth as well. Stephanie and Megan, excellent. Uh, I'm sure there's more, but at the end of the day, I just wanted to make to acknowledge as many as I could see, or at least on that one screen. Uh, how about that? All right, so let me see if I can pull up some more of the comments in a different direction, because I am going to try to do that, but it's not always working out proper. Oh, good Lord. Okay, there we go. I think I'm getting it. All right, so I see some of the short-term rentals rocks now. Excellent. Uh, I can see that. That's the other thing. Uh, thank you uh, for reminding me. For those of you, if you wish to make sure to maximize your entries, what you want to do is you want to tag someone else either in the group or tag someone outside the group, get them in the group, because that will give you more entries for some of the giveaways. So what does that mean? 
some of the giveaways are re- some of the things that I think make a big difference, like a book uh, or a collection of books, uh, in addition to Amazon gift cards, in addition to other things that, let me put it this way, if you are not participating, if you're not commenting, if you're not uh, turning in the homework, you're going to wish you did. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. So, uh, yes, there's, there's it's basically prizes for uh, the engagement metrics that we can see. Uh, the number one metric comments or sorry, number one metric is, you know, uh, sharing and comments um, as well as tagging and getting individuals into the group. Uh, reactions, likes, all that type of stuff, because this is meant to be interactive in a lot of ways. And for that to happen, that means you you have to type things. <laughs> My goal is to help you get to the point to where you have the information that you need in order to get to the goals that you're after, because I, I assume that's the, why a number of you are here. Now, um. Oh, yes. Thank you, Megan, for typing that in the chat. Some of you have uh, written in today looking for the what is the address to be able to how do I turn in the homework? It's uh, if you go over to cashflowdiary.com forward slash homework hyphen upload cashflowdiary.com forward slash homework hyphen upload uh, and you'll be able to upload your homework <laughs> right there so that it makes it really easy uh, for us to know who is tracking right along with us. OK, so um, again, one more time, if you're just now getting here, because I just it feels like I just saw a wave of people. It's like Facebook just sent out a bunch of notifications or something. So if, if you're just now getting here and you don't have the homework type short terms or sorry, you don't have the worksheet for today, the worksheet for today type short term rentals rock in the chat and we will make sure that you absolutely get it, okay? Now, while that's going on, um, what I am doing right now is that I'm pulling up my notes for today because as we go through, in the same way that we go through this, uh, because this is live, all that type of stuff, um, what I do is I make notes to make sure that I don't forget anything, (laughs) that, that I share the information that I know that you need, uh, so that you can, um, so that you can, oh, sorry, my screen just kind of did something weird, uh, cause I'm looking for, mm. there it is. Got it. So I was looking for that. Anyway, I, I've got all my notes now. Hopefully you've got your notes now. And just like yesterday, um, if you're ready, I need you to type in the chat, I'm ready. So like if we were live on stage, I would say, hey, if you're ready, say I'm ready. So since you can't say I'm ready in a way that I can hear you, you can type I'm ready in the chat. So as a quick review, yesterday we talked about uh, why short-term rentals. Um, And a number of you, uh, we asked, you know, what were some of the takeaways that you got from yesterday like what were what were the things that impressed you or the things that you maybe you didn't know at that particular time so i'm gonna pull those up so that we can talk about a little bit of those and then we'll get into the new content uh for today all right then where to go upload link sorry pulling up your answers the things that um so for those who participated in yesterday's information where does it go there it goes is this the one yeah the aha moments yes so it says um malik was talking about how he one of the aha moments from yesterday was that he could have an actual six or seven figure business in real estate uh that could retire him from his job uh how many of you can relate to malik give me a show of hands like in in your ideal world one of the goals one of the reasons you want short-term rentals to work for you um is so that you no longer have to work the job you currently work now it doesn't mean you don't work it just means what you do uh where you work uh you you likely have way more control okay way more control i can totally understand uh david said uh i love how you figured out how it lowered the barrier to entry yes lowering the barrier to entry especially when it comes to real estate is important because um when we're committing a resource money effort energy time etc it can cause anxiety it'll cause you to negotiate incorrectly you make some wrong choices but 
as opposed to taking a 30 year risk when you're first getting started and don't know anything, I'm just saying take a 12 month one, like 12 months. <laughs> That's really what I'm saying. And, it, and it's an easier way to get you ready to own real estate long term. Um, Sandy said, not only can you earn double the rental amount, but also build collaboration with others in the group, uh, as you now know they exist, and building a business that will allow creating a safe space for the customers being served while reducing errors and the learning curve. Exactly. Um, what, what Sandy hints at is that at Cashflow Diary, we tend to operate as a group together. Um, yes, uh, did quote unquote, did I go first? Do, do I, you know, have a lot of units and, and we've produced a lot of the content? We've done everything. Yes, that is 100% true. And yet, when you're inside of our community, you know that we all learn from each other, period. Um, and we're all, we've all got different strengths. We've all got different things that, that matter and ways to reduce expenses and increase revenue, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And that's, that's one of the best things ever. Uh, Susan said that the opportunity, the window of opportunity is wide open and it's bigger than you might think. Yes, exactly. We showed a, uh, an article uh, yesterday. So if you weren't here yesterday, what you want to do is you're going to want to go up into the units section. So I believe it's unit five right now. It says day one on it, but in unit five, during the, the video, we showed an article uh, that uh, was done on CNN because Marriott is interested entering into the the space as well meaning that if the space was overcrowded marriott wouldn't be getting in and their idea of dipping their toe in the water started with five thousand units so that we're clear uh anna says the statistics were indeed my aha moment i was shocked to learn that the number of individuals that are not even <laughs> familiar with airbnb such opportunity still yes anna you are 100 percent accurate um just because you know doesn't mean everyone knows just because your circle of friends know doesn't mean another circle of friend also know there are very very few people who or they're vaguely familiar. So understand, vague, they're like kind of maybe sort of familiar. Uh, and and as we go throughout the next couple of days, we're still using Airbnb as a verb. It's not a verb. <laughs> you can't Airbnb a house. What do you, what does that mean? <laughs> you <laughs> anyway, it's a marketplace. It's not a verb. We haven't even figured that out yet. So we, we've got a long way to go before anything like that. Uh, April says that landlords will let you lease the property to run your business. You're like, yeah, because uh, that is a common concern or question or thought like, wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Well, you're going to let me lease your property and you do realize I'm going to make even more money than what I pay you. Right. That's the only way this works. And they're like, yeah, I realize that. And many of you, you're like, well, why would anyone do that? I would just do it myself. Well, see, that's the difference. You're not them. You're not their lifestyle. You're not at that stage or, or, or you value things that are different. And that's what creates the opportunity uh, for you and I, you know, and at the same time, it's not really that strange of a concept. I mean, because most of you, if you've ever been to, I don't know, a grocery store, a coffee shop, a movie theater, a hotel or many, 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 many and most <laughs> other retail establishments guess what they pay rent to somebody else period it's the same idea just applied differently jason says uh how the expenses only increase 10 percent over standard rentals yes that is one of the things that people miss they're like wait what uh they think it's going to cost exorbitantly more than it would be if i was running a regular rental property no it does not now, you need systems, and we'll talk about that. I think that's day four. Yes, I think that's day four. So two days from today, we'll be talking about systems and scale and how all of that works together because people are always concerned about, do I have time? Can I make this work? Jay, I've got a job, and you don't understand. And I'm like, dude, I got four kids, a wife. I mean, I understand is all I'm saying. <laughs> okay, I understand. And yes is the answer. Um, 
<laughs> having units in different states. Yes, totally possible, Nevin. Excellent. And the challenges of transitioning assets. Yes, Karen, there's a, <laughs> well, when it comes to real estate, there's always a challenge in some way, shape or form. But one of the things to always remember is that inside that transition is an opportunity for all of us. And that's exactly what we like to do. So that's a great recap uh, of yesterday. So for those of you who are here for the first time, here's how this works. Uh, I'm going to go through the content. You should have your worksheet now. Okay. As I go through the worksheet, you're going to fill it in. And then uh, hope by the time we're done, you'll know we're done because you'll have all the answers or we're getting close to done because you'll have all the answers, right? If you, if you like, I don't have all the answers, it's because we're not done yet. And those of you who turn it in, uh, again, that's the that's part of the process for the, the, the giveaways and the drawings, etc., so that you can participate. But most importantly, learn. Ask questions in the chat. Megan and Stephanie are there to help uh, get my attention as needed, but you guys keep chatting away because I can see it scrolling out the corner of my eye now. It just suddenly decided to start working, so which is great. And um, what we'll do is we're, I'm going to do my best today to in the short time that we have to to... To honestly get, translate something to you that has taken me a long time to codify, to make simple, uh, to, so that people could have an understanding of exactly what happens. Okay. Now, in the same way, yesterday I I talked about how the that the way that I was believing that you know a credit score of three ninety eight and, and all these other things meant I could not have property. And that it meant that I was wrong or something wasn't, you know, because that's what the world says. You can't do that because you are this or you have that or blah, 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 blah. This is also very, very true. So to, to demonstrate what I mean, uh, here's a, here's my question. And I know I haven't I haven't given you the answer and you don't know. But my question to you is for those of you who have been wondering things like, well, you know, that you're like, I got to get access to somebody else's money in order to make this work. My, my first question to you is, what do you think? What do you believe right now, based upon the information that you have today? What do you believe? Get ready to write this in the chat. What do you believe investors are looking for? What is it that you think investors are looking for? Uh, so that they like, what, what does it take to get the investor to give you or yeah, to give you their money so that you can go out and do the project. I want you to type that in the chat. And yes, I'm going to give you some time to type that because I want to see that, that I want to see the chat scrolling because I want to know what you guys think it takes to make that happen. Um, now, obviously, we're going to talk about that a lot today, <laughs> right? <laughs> but I want to see what you guys think um, it takes to make that happen. All right. Um, let me scroll. I'm scrolling through comments. Woo. Okay. All right. I, I I see that. That that's. There are lots of. This is good. This is good. I like seeing what I'm seeing. I'm seeing all kinds of. I'm seeing all kinds of interesting answers right now. Okay. ROI. Uh, determination and drive. This is good. Uh, what 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 did he say? Uh, somebody beat you to it. Return, Scott says. Okay. ROI, knowledge of risk assessments and financials. ROI, build units. <laughs> Olympia. Yes. She's like, just just cash flow, bro. Uh, let's, not, let's not get fancy with this. Totally understood. I like all these answers. Preparedness. Karen, that is cool. Uh, ROI and time. Awesome. Totally love it. Totally love it. Um, there, there, are, there are two things. It's, it's basically character and competence. Those are the two things you need, character and competence. Um, you, and there are many different ways you can demonstrate, say, character. Um, just, you know, for example, maybe you produce a podcast and you produce, make sure it shows up every Monday and Thursday. That's a hint, by the way. Our podcast is, <laughs> shows up every Monday and Thursday. Um, or you do, you know, YouTube videos and, and those show up consistently or and we'll talk about this. Uh, m maybe you host an event at which you do one very important thing. You educate individuals 
And you do that consistently. There are many different ways to demonstrate character. Demonstrating competence is also important. Um, one of the things that's really important to understand today is that um, he or she who educates the market dominates the market. Therefore, and I know you've heard many people say produce content, but now you have context for why your marketing, your content production is your marketing, period. That, that's what does it. Uh, just, I mean, and again, maybe I'm wrong, but for the majority of you, you're here today because you probably saw a piece of content that we created in some way, shape, or form. Now, it could have been on Instagram, it could have been on Pinterest, it could have been on YouTube, it could have been on Facebook, it could have been in many different formats, uh, it could have been our podcast, but it was some piece of content. And there's something that was said, or you thought about, or you were you were invited by somebody who saw a piece of content in some way, shape, or form, and that's how you ended up here. Um, because you're looking for something. Meaning, when you do produce content, make sure that that content helps people and answers one of their questions. You, you can't answer all of their questions because there's just, A, too many questions, and B, they're very complicated sometimes. But you can answer at least one. And that's what we're doing. I'm, I'm literally demonstrating this for you in front of you as it goes uh, so so that people understand. And when it comes to raising capital, there are three types of individuals that you want to be consistently in front of, right? Especially as it relates to short-term rentals. Uh, you want to be in front of your guests. You want to be in front of landlords. And you want to be in front of investors. Okay? You want to be in front of guests. You want to be in front of landlords. And you want to be in front of investors. Now, just a quick moment. You remember in class where... Or, or, or anytime your teacher said, it, like if they repeated something, it was probably important. Uh, I'd, I'll just drop that hint right there for those of you who are following along on the worksheet. Uh, you you want to make sure, though, that you're always in front of guests, you're in front of landlords, and that you're in front of investors. This is where it, it uh, the capital or your business, this is how the business works and runs uh, at the end of the day. Here's the challenge, though. Oftentimes, we, the operator, make some assumptions about who the investor is. Like when I say the word investor, some of you get a vision of a person who's in some fancy suit or tall uh, skyscraper building, possibly in Silicon Valley. And you, you want to start talking about valuation and internal rates of return and all kinds of fancy uh, accounting words that, that matter, but typically aren't useful and or relevant uh, for you and I at the beginning or when we're trying to raise capital. Um, and, and oftentimes, though, when I say things like raising capital, people will start thinking in the millions and tens of millions, which is, again, completely fine. I've had the privilege of raising tens of millions of dollars, which is, again, why I know this stuff. But here, here, here's my point. Oftentimes, the um, investor, if you will, you're sitting right next to them. You're in the, in some cases, you're in the chat room with them, <laughs> right? Uh, you, you're closer than you think, and they're just another person just like you. There's no magic sauce to it, okay? And uh, part of the challenge, though, is Nobody has any context for which to operate. Here's what I mean. When you think about a sports team, some sports teams have a identity. They're known for doing certain things. Some teams are known for winning. Some are known for losing. Some are known for offense. Some are known for defense. Some are known for, you know, special teams. Uh, some are known for always going to the Super Bowl over and over and over again until they get beat by some... Uh, anyway, you know, some of you know exactly what I was talking about. Anyway, my point is not every, not every um, person is aware of this, this phenomenon, this identity. What I mean is every person you're talking to, even you, you have what I like to call an investor identity. There's also the, the marketplace, it has an identity, that your team has an identity, a culture, if you will. And the actual transaction that you're looking at, it too has an identity. 
oftentimes the 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 challenge is individuals we want to focus on the deal now i just talked about investor marketplace team deal in that order is how things are created and that's what matters the most interchangeable piece is the deal what you need to be solid 100 percent solid on is your investor identity period you need to know that you need to understand what it is that you prefer what is it that you do so again regardless of the asset class that you've chosen regardless of the 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 even uh, to some degree the strategy regardless of your acquisition method this happens in real estate all the time people get confused they're like what do you do and you're like i do probate and i'm like that's how you buy the property what do you do <laughs> i want to know what you do um you know uh, and that that's why it's it's cash flow see I, i'm asset agnostic i don't really care what the underlying asset is can it produce cash flow what does it take to make that produce cash flow because that's where I get uh, that. That's important to me. And for those of you who were here yesterday, you know why that was important to me. Simply because we couldn't eat or drink, walk or talk. How do you earn money if you can't do some basic things? And I needed assets that produce cash flow so that if we got sick, we'd have a way to still survive. Period. Nothing fancy about that. Just a solution to a problem. Investors have an identity, marketplaces have an identity, teams have an identity, deals have an identity. Here's why this is important. is because the deal should be the most interchangeable piece, meaning even if you don't have a short-term rental property under contract right now or that you're signing a lease on, you should still be able to talk about who you serve, how you serve them, what it is that you do, what types of properties your customer prefers, you should be able to talk about everything that you do in general without knowing a particular address, period. And if you can't, that's really the issue, not the fact that you are going, because sometimes I'll get the question, hey, Jay, do you think, uh, is this, uh, should I do 7% or should I do 9%? Because I think if I do 9% and then if I do this and, I blah, 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 and I'm like, yo, stop. N- just stop um, or it, it shows up as hey hey Jay what where can I find uh, where, how, how can I get a, a pitch deck together I'm like what you need that for like what do you need it for because <laughs> you don't and and people don't like it when I say that but you don't the best presentation is the one that you never give um, so you, you you don't need it what you do need is you need to function a lot like a doctor functions because see here's what happens all right everybody thanks for listening and i'm glad that you are enjoying what you are hearing thus far but here's one of the things that's really important one of the most important things that you can do as get started one of the things that i've said before and i say again once you get started stay started but more importantly there can be lots of roadblocks to getting started. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove one of those roadblocks for you and make it a little bit easier. Because the thing that I don't want to stop you is thinking, do I need a local number? How about a long distance number? Or should it be 800? How on earth am I going to make that happen so that people can contact me as I'm out there building my business, making my cash flow grow, but most importantly, understanding that it doesn't have to be difficult. Many of you may know, but if you don't, there's a company out there by the name of Grasshopper. And what I want you to do is I want you to go over to trygrasshopper.com forward slash cash flow diary. Grasshopper is the entrepreneur's phone system. It works like a traditional phone system, but requires no hardware to purchase, no software to install. It's just the number that flat works. So if you are out there building that distributed workforce across many different locations, it's a way for you to still go out there and make your number be unified simple easy to use something we've been using for quite some time so again go over to trygrasshopper.com forward slash cash flow diary now let's get back to the rest of the story when you get sick when we need the services of a doctor here's what happens we go to their office 
right? This is where we can see them as an expert, right? And, and what you have to do is you do whatever they say because they ask you a lot of questions. And then after they ask a lot of questions, in some cases they're quiet and they go research something, I don't know, leave the room, come back, they tell you nothing. And then eventually they make a diagnosis, a prognosis, and then they give you a prescription. See, <coughs> if they don't do it that way, <coughs> that's called malpractice. Apparently I need to drink. So if they don't do it that way, that's called malpractice. Yet, when, <laughs> when you want to raise capital, the first thing you want to do is start presenting. What are you presenting? And to whom, first of all. But what are you presenting? And why are you presenting? And why on earth should I listen to you? But more importantly than any of that, could you imagine if doctors did it that way? What if when you sat down in the doctor's office, all of a sudden they burst through the door and then they start a PowerPoint presentation about the brand new drug that they just heard? That would be really strange. That would be really strange. Like that, that would just be strange, right? You know, that I don't even know what else to say, but you don't understand. This is the greatest drug ever. They just made it. It's brand new. It's better than the last drug. I'm like, that, that, that's wonderful. And yet, that's what, that's, that's what we do as humans oftentimes. Uh, you must become a professional information gatherer. A pig, if you will. A professional information gatherer. Because a professional information gatherer, like a doctor, is then able to put themselves in a position to diagnose, make a prognosis, and then prescribe. You, you cannot do it any other way because you don't know what the investor wants. See, that's the answer. The answer is when, when I ask you, hey, what, what do investors want? You're like, ROI, this, that, and the other. The true answer is you don't know. I ain't got a clue. You will never know until you ask them. And the challenge is, is you can't ask them directly because most people don't know that they have an investor identity. So they can't articulate it. And it comes out as, oh, that deal didn't feel right. It didn't look good. I didn't really, you know. The next time someone says no to you, ask them why. Why, why, why no? It, it oftentimes, especially in the places of raising capital, well, why no? Well, I heard that I could and, and I saw on this. Okay, great. So... But so do you know how to go do that thing that you heard you could? Well, no. OK. Are you being offered that now? No. OK. So you're saying you'd rather do nothing? I'm just trying to understand. Because the, the best words that I can tell you is compared to what? You know, compared to what? If you're not thinking about compared to what, what ends up happening, you know, is you don't even know why they said no. They don't, a lot of cases, don't have an option or an answer. You are the operator. You are the one with the solution. So make sure that they understand that. Make sure that they understand their own investor identity. See, I know I identify with cash flow all day long. So therefore, Bringing me lots of deals or transactions that are a bunch of capital gains, probably not the best idea because it's not something I necessarily identify with. That doesn't mean I haven't done that. It just means it's not like my preferred cup of tea. Um, it's also not the sexy cup of tea because you, you're never talking about, ooh, I made $200,000 on this one transaction in 60 days or, you know, whatever. Every summer we go through that wave of stuff. You know what I'm saying? But by co becoming a professional information gatherer, you have a chance at understanding what their issue is. See, until you hear uh, someone say, well, I'm, I'm really tired paying too much in taxes. Oh, got it. You can then, then you, you have a shot at structuring a deal that, well, minimizes their tax liability. A until you hear someone say something like, well, 
I, I, I have all this money in my 401k, but I, I, I'm not, I don't know what to do with it. I'm not planning on using it uh, for a while. The, you, you don't know that a capital gains transaction might make sense. Because see, here's what I see happen a lot. I see happen all the time. Someone is using, their investor is using a, what's it called, a, a retirement plan. And then they structure a deal and start paying the investor monthly cash flow or even quarterly for that matter. And you know what happens? That person is suddenly receiving checks that they can't use because it's inside a retirement plan and you're paying them $100 a month and you're excited because, hey, they're getting cash flow. This is great. This is what they want. Really? Was that the highest and best use of, of that capital at that moment? Probably not because you could probably use it to continue to grow. But because you made the assumption that cash flow was great, and I'm not saying it's not, and that's what they needed, that's what they ended up with, but it doesn't really serve the purpose often. There are many different things, many different reasons why someone will choose to to invest with you. And it's important that you understand that uh, from the beginning and that you don't assume, you know, that you know why someone would give you their money they're trying to solve a problem you and i were trying to solve a problem if the i i i gave these people the, my money for the for this water bottle because it solves a problem the problem was not that i didn't have access to water the problem wasn't even that i couldn't get a water bottle the problem was every water bottle i get i tend to leave and lose or i stop using it because i forget to drink the water this water bottle flashes. It literally has a light on the inside. And when it senses that I need to stay on track to keep more water, you know what it does? A light goes off. And I can see that light because it gets my attention. And then you know what I do? I pick up the bottle. I drink the water. I put it back down. It solved the problem, right? Same is true for your transaction, your short-term rental. It needs to solve a problem, but you don't know what problem it solves until you have taken your guests, your landlords, your investors, and got them into a situation in which they can see you as the expert. That would be what you would need to do. You have to invite them into your world so that they can see you as an expert. Sometimes, and again today, you can be seen as an expert by producing content, maybe on YouTube, uh, maybe you write a blog, maybe you produce a podcast. By the way, all three of those things, really, really close to free. So it's not about money. And that begins to attract your people to you. One of my favorite ways to do this, and please write this down, is to play a board game called Cashflow 101. By playing that board game, you accomplish so many things. You gather your guests, landlords, and investors. But now that they're at your house or wherever you guys want to play, they get to see you as an expert, possibly for the first time. I have no idea why my nose is itching so much today. Anyway, um, they get to see you as an expert. And now that they see you as an expert, um, your job is to educate them, educate to dominate. After they've seen you as an expert, you invite them to what I call an investor identity interview or triple I. This is where you sit down to find out. Like you sit down, find out, ask them questions. What are you looking for? What type of investing have you done in the past? Okay, so you had a bad experience. Why are you looking to invest again? What type of return are you used to? Got it. See, oftentimes, especially those of us in real estate, we think we know. Oh, no one's going to. <laughs> Sorry, this is just like yesterday. We think we know. No one's going to lease the property. They wouldn't dare do that. And uh, well, no one's going to give me the the the, uh, the their money for five percent. They wouldn't do that. If they've been getting two for the last ten years, they might. They might actually do because that could be good for them. <laughs> but and, and sometimes what, what's really funny is that. We go, well, I, I have to, I, I got to pay 9%. Mm. And you, what you don't realize is that in context, there are some people who are who get scared by that because they're like, 9%, that must be, that, that, that's that got to be risky. But in your head, you're like, what do you mean? And you have to meet people where they are. But you need a system to meet people where they are, and this is the system. Um, or at least 
it, it, this is, is what I can tell you in the time that we've got and how to make the system work. See, what, what we fail to realize often is that whether it's a short-term rental, long-term rental, single-family house, satellite, business, I don't really care. There are four profit centers, four profit centers in every deal. Every real estate deal, every business deal, there's four profit centers. When you understand that there are four profit centers and then can choose which ones you'd like to keep and which ones you can give away, it makes it easier for you to make forward progress. If you act as though everybody must want, they must want what either what you want or what you think they want based upon your assumptions, you fail to raise capital because you did not ask them what you want. That's really the answer. You didn't diagnose, you didn't ask them any questions to find out, do they have inflation sickness? <laughs> yeah, making stuff up now. <laughs> do they have, uh, what's the other one? Uh, uh, tax, uh, the, the tax burden sickness? I mean, taxitis? Yeah, we'll call it that one. We'll call it taxitis, <laughs> you know? Uh, is the river of cash flow dry? <laughs> what is it? Uh, you, don't know. In fact, believe it or not, there are some people who invest to get no money. Period. I've had people tell me, Jay, I don't need any more money. Got it. Sometimes they're, especially depending on what where, where, where they're from, sometimes they're investing to keep their capital safe from their government. So they're not overly concerned about there being a return on the principal, they just want to make sure that the principal doesn't become the government's. So they maybe they buy some real estate. There are many, many different reasons. And if you lead with what you believe is great without finding out, you both lose. That's the problem. That's the problem. But you have to educate to dominate in order to figure that out and sit down with your triple I interview and then after you sat down, when you're sitting there uncovering what it is that they're looking for, then, then you have now earned the right to tell them what you're up to. You have now earned the right to do what I call a profit analysis quadrant conversation, PAQ conversation. Uh, that is actually something that I uh, invented, I guess. I don't know. I made up that's chapter nine. Trying to flip to it as fat up. Oh, I went the wrong direction. Because inside, is this it? Oh, it's in here somewhere. Because I want to show you the color. Ah, oh, there it went. Page. So if you guys have the book, it's page 269. Well, it looks like inside the book anyway. Um, um, yeah. So it's inside the book because what. It, what it is, it became a tool that I was able to use and many investors have been able to use and we use to help put together deals on the back of a napkin to help raise capital sitting at Starbucks. The, the four areas of profit are appreciation, amortization, depreciation, and cash flow. All four of those areas individually can be manipulated to create the outcome that the other person is looking for. See, when you understand that there are five different types of appreciation, you can use any one of those five to, to give them a different outcome. When you know that there's uh, amortization available, that there are ways to give it away and there's a ways to keep it. Uh, and and there, so therefore, there's, that means there's times for interest only. There's time for fully amortized. There's time for balloons. But you have to know how to use these tools. You can't just know that they exist. That's not enough of a solution. And then helping individuals keep the, the, the funds that they earn, that's kind of important, you know, so that if, if they and then if they get sick, too, now they have cash flow, passive income, something of that nature. This it's an entire process that you are taking individuals through the whole thing. So what does that mean? Where are we? That means you. You. At the top, you have your guests, your landlords, your investors. What you do is you're inviting them to see you as an expert. And then you, you ask them, you know, hey, 
you want to take this next step, that type of thing. Now you find out what they're doing. What are you up to? What is the concern? What problems do you have? How, what are you trying to solve? Then you can show them what you're up to and how your transaction works and can be structured to solve their problem. And then it's, it's very simple after that. You just simply ask them to enroll. Literally, does this make sense to you? Would you like to make that happen? That's what we're talking about. It's either a yes or a no. I mean, they just told you what the problem is. They, they have a cough. Cool. I have cough syrup. Would you like some? That, that's it. And, and it doesn't need to be any more complicated than that. No PowerPoint required. <laughs> okay. And the, the only other thing you need to worry about after that is after you've gone through that process, just always make sure that you ask for a referral because when you ask for that referral, it starts the process over. Because remember, you're always inviting guests, landlords, and investors into your world to see you as an expert. That's what you do. That is the business, right? Especially if you want to raise capital. You're inviting them to see you as an expert. And then when they see you as an expert, the next step is, hey, can I find out? Let's find out more about what you're up to. And then here's what we're doing. And if does that make any sense? If it makes sense, great. Let's move forward. And by the way, can you send us a referral? And then you do it again. And 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 there are many different ways to invite people into your world as an expert. There are many different ways. I've given you four, if I remember correctly, because I talked about blogging, podcasts, YouTube, as well as holding cash flow games. All four of those are something every one of you can do. Now, will you? Hmm, different story. Because see here, because here's what here's the problem. You were hoping that I would I don't know have some list of people randomly who would give you their money, even though you don't have a relationship with them, or some sort of investor store, some sort of twelve magic secret words that makes people open their wallet and give it to you. That doesn't exist. Doesn't exist because you haven't demonstrated character and competence. But once you do. After you do, as you're going through this process, then you have a shot. So long as you remember that they're only going to do it because it solves a problem they have. Period. Okay, you, you that you you've taken the time to think about your investor identity, their investor identity, the marketplaces, the team that you've built, and then what the deal is going to do. You've taken the time to become a professional information gatherer and literally hold an entire conversation just by asking questions to find out what's going on. Because then once you do, then you know what you can do? You can diagnose. You can give a prognosis. You got a prescription. Your deal structure, that's the prescription. And then you're in position to take advantage of the four profit centers, whether that be appreciation, depreciation, amortization, or cash flow. And now you have what you need to actually raise capital. That's the secret. It's not about, oh, this pays 7% and that pays 10%. And this is over here. You can have some of the equity. Well, I heard you could do all of those are options. That doesn't mean any of them are, are good or bad necessarily. But do they solve the problem? If they don't solve the problem, then you've wasted everybody's time. There's no magic silver bullet. Period. Which, unfortunately, is probably disappointing for some of you. And for others of you, it's probably also relieving because you're like, oh, cool. Then I haven't been doing it wrong. Awesome. <laughs> you just need to find out what the person's need on the other end. And I, I hope that makes sense, right? I hope that makes sense. In fact, if that makes sense, give me two thumbs up in the chat because I just want to see. Make sure that you didn't fall asleep um, on me in some way, shape, or form. So give me those two thumbs up in the chat as well. Now, the um, homework, very similarly to yesterday, uh, is going to be, uh, what did you learn? What did you take away? What was that one thing you thought was absolutely positively necessary like some of you i know you're like oh he's going to show us how to put together a killer powerpoint presentation <laughs> nope sorry didn't happen um so now you're like well what does he mean that is that that literally it 
Yeah, that's literally it. That is the process. Okay, at the end of the day. Um, and then I, I, I do, I'm, I'm open to taking a few questions. So if you haven't already, by all means, type your question in the chat because I, I, I want to do my best to make sure that I've covered all of the bases. But th that's the secret, quote unquote, to raising capital, if you will. That exact process, working with guest landlords and investors, inviting them to see me as an expert, doing an investor identity interview, having the profit analysis quadrant conversation, letting them know what I'm up to, then saying, do you think it makes any sense? And then, yeah, I do. Great. Cool. And by the way, we need a referral. And then you do it again. And then you do it again. And then you do it again. That's it. You know, that, that, that's the magic. And from that, you create a deal structure that works for you and for them. Well, what's the magic deal structure? There is no one magic deal structure. Yes, you could share. Could you uh, form an entity and share equity? Yeah, sure. Is that I definitely don't think that's the best way to go. Not for you anyway. But that doesn't mean you couldn't do it. Can you get a loan? Yeah, absolutely. You totally can. Uh, well, they won't give me a loan without collaterals. That's not true. That's your assumption. Because not every loan has collateral. What do you think a credit card is? It's an uncollateralized loan, period. It, it's always been that way in that case. Unless you have a secured, you know, that's just what it is. At the end of the day, the, 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 the loan is the loan. The terms are the terms. It is what it is. Um, can you split the cash? You can do all the creative stuff that you have ever thought of in your brain. Yes, is uh, absolutely possible. 100%. And n none of it uh, is right or necessarily right or none of it is necessarily wrong. Some of it limits your ability to scale. Um, yeah. And, and some of it, you know, hampers you in many different ways. But at the end of the day, can you do it? It's not an issue of can. The question is, is, does it solve the problem? If you've got a person who's younger, not looking to use the cash flow for a long time, and you're really busy trying to pay them month, money every quarter, month, or whatever, that could be a problem because they, they don't have anything to, to, to use it on or for. Anyway, I'm going to look in the chat, see if we've got a few questions, and let me make sure. Yes, I, I believe, I know, I gave you all of the answers. I was just looking, making sure. Um, if you feel like you've missed something, by all means, say so in the chat. I'll do my best uh, to make that. Um, uh, I'll do my best to make that the, the um, I'll do my best just to answer the question, whatever that might have been at this point. Got it. So let's saw let's scroll all the way back. We we are scrolling back. Got it. Let's see. I see lots of short term rentals rocking. This is good. <laughs> I see that. Uh, Shelly, hey, how are you, uh, Jeremiah? Uh, it, okay, got it. Uh, if you guys aren't friends or something, there's something going with the messaging. Hopefully, you got it. Um, Still, I can't. Okay, Megan, I was able to sift through the messages. It looks like that's good. What about the option to set up property owners' property for short-term rentals and getting paid as a management company? Yeah, you. Uh, I don't. Do I have a problem with that? No. Does it give you the ownership, the control, the freedom, the lifestyle? No. That that is. I mean, and again, that's what's important to me. Can you do that? Yes. Um, knock yourself out. Some of our students do. Most of them don't. Some of them do. Um, but, you know, most of them would rather, you know, uh, own or control the property uh, in some way, shape or form, meaning they purchase it or lease it. But most of them lease it first. Like that's phase one. Then they move over to phase two and phase three, uh, because ultimately that's I think phase three is where you want to be. You want to end up owning the properties long term, Scott. That's what I believe. So, yeah. Could you? You can. But that it, I don't know if you're asking, like, is that better? I don't think so. But hey, it, it, it doesn't it at least gets you some experience. It's a different kind of experience. It's a different responsibility. It's just, you know, it's just different. 
and it doesn't lend itself. And this is probably the biggest problem I have with it. It doesn't naturally lend itself to you getting to phase three because I know a ton of people who end up managing property and get stuck. Well, managing other people's property for a really long time. And I don't, I just have no, I have no desire to go down that path. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, I'm scrolling, looking for some more. Determine, oh, got it. That's funny. Olympia, da, da, da. Knowledge, okay, yep, yep, yep. Hey, uh, Tyler, welcome to, okay, got it. I'm just looking for more. Bob, find and solve their problems. Yeah, you you have to find and solve their problems. That That is 100% correct. Shelly, I have been thinking I needed to create a business. <laughs> okay, Shelly, I'm putting this on the screen because a lot of people have this one. I've been thinking I need to create a business plan in order to raise the funds because my previous attempts failed. Your training has helped me understand that it is important um, because it has helped me establish yourself as an expert. Yeah, 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 yeah. Your, your previous attempts likely have failed because when you create a business plan, often what is happening is you're guessing. You're guessing. And you're doing more guessing. And you're not even basing that guessing like you you didn't even take a survey first like survey the people before you start guessing and you're like cool i mean could you imagine like just imagine you walk into a room random people you've never met your job is to feed them so you just start making food and feeding them how many of those people don't eat meat probably allergic to nuts, have some, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, that would be really hard, in my opinion, for you to accomplish and pull off successfully. How many times are you going to fail? You're going to fail a lot because you don't know what you don't know. But in our human weakness, we feel like we have to be perfect or present ourselves as such in order for people to be willing to then work with us and that's just not the case you know um and it gets in our way but when we just take the time and go you know what yeah you know your solution i'm not saying you don't what i'm saying is you don't know how your solution will work for them and because you didn't take the time that's why you didn't get the money and i don't even care what the project is i've helped people this same thing works if you're trying to raise money for an app you're trying to raise money for obviously real estate a business a music cd what else have I? It, I mean, it, it doesn't matter. It just flat doesn't matter. What matters is that you understand how to use what you have available, your ability to produce uh, uh, value for the marketplace. That's what you have. You have an ability to produce value for the marketplace. How do you use it to solve their problem? What part of the four quadrants of the four profit centers are you willing to give away to them so that it solves their problem? And you know what? If you didn't ask, you don't know. You just don't. know, And that's the problem. And, and, and what's worse is that because you don't know, you go, well, we should do the deal 50-50. And you end up making a really, really, really bad mistake because... You know, they gave me the money. I did the work. Mm, that ain't necessarily 50-50 in my book. And until you do the math, you don't realize, like, you just gave up a lot. And you probably didn't have to in a lot of cases. So. But Karen, that's a, or sorry, not Karen, Shelly, that's a great question because there's a lot of people who assume that. I thank you for being uh, willing to be vulnerable and share that because there, there's a lot. Um, I missed one through seven. Yep, I, I missed four through seven. I totally understand. Okay, guys. So I'll say the one through seven part. I'll say the whole thing again because it doesn't sound like I'm talking about one through seven when I say it. But remember, this entire process works because <clears throat> you're taking your guests, landlords, and investors. You're inviting them to see you as an expert and then after they've seen you as an expert the next step is for you to ask them to see to come to an investor identity interview where you can find out what they want 
then you have the earn the right to tell them and show them what you're up to. And then you ask them, do you think it makes any sense? I.e., you enroll them in the process of joining you. And then once all that's done, what you want to do is you want to make sure that you ask for a referral so the process starts all over again. Okay? So I just I, there you go. It, it Hopefully that, that made sense that time. Jeremiah, Bob, I see what you have there. What is the book that the, uh, where, what is the book? I wrote a book, Olympia. It's called, um, like everything else around here, Cash Flow Diary, 10 Steps to Creating Wealth in Any Economy. Uh, that's where it is. Uh, we used to have a PDF on it. I don't know where that is anymore. Sorry. Because I, I I took that one section out and we we. We had, I think we even had a video training at one time um, where I was breaking it down and showing people how to manipulate and use it. Um, hmm, interesting. You're giving me an idea right now. So, uh, but that uh, I'm reasonably certain you can still get it on uh, Amazon, but I, I, well, I know for a fact you can still get the audiobook. Um, in fact, they gave me a code. It's cashflowdiary.com forward slash audible. Yes. And you can get it, you can get it, uh, the audiobook. If you're not already an Audible listener, they'll give it to you for free um, with a, um, uh, when you uh, take them up on their offer for their uh, for Audible listener program subscription. Thing. So you can get the book for free. You get free 30 days uh, of that, and then you could get the book too. So hopefully that makes sense. Karen, sound, whoa. Should the PDF be editable? Not all of the fields are edible for me. That's a good question. I didn't make the PDF, but it's not a bad idea. We'll make sure that tomorrow is, is editable and we'll we'll do our best to get you an editable version, Karen. How about that? Um missed the is achieved by miss the blank is achieved by matching blank and blank. Where da 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 Miss the Oh, hold on one second. <laughs> it's this is funny. I wonder if teachers go through this, like where they've created, you know, the test and whatnot. And they're like, you missed the what? I thought I went over that. How did you miss that? And then they look back at their thing and go, oh, I guess I didn't go over that. Anyway, sorry. Miss the. Got it. Um, so. Wait, wait. Oh, man. How do I say this without just, like, giving it away? I don't even understand. Um, do you remember when I was talking about a doctor? <laughs> so what, what, it, what it comes down to is that you, you want to um, achieve your this success, okay, uh, by you, you're able to raise the capital. You have to solve the problems, but you must first remember that the doctor goes through a process. That process is, is very simple. Um, but when you imitate their process, you have similar results because you, you've got to do the diagnosis, prognosis, and then give a prescription um, in order to help solve the problem there, David. So hopefully that works. How much time do you typically, what does this take? To repay the investor, let's say, for one short-term rental unit. Again, Karen, there is... Okay, so let me explain um, why I say you have to ask. There is no... um, There is no, like, what's the word? Time limit, so to speak. Because here's how that... Because that is not the, the question you should be asking them. You don't offer a certain amount of time. So, and... If guy, in case you guys didn't know, I, I, I said earlier, I'm a father of many children. One second. Yes, darling. Can I play the VR? Yes, you may play the VR. By all means, please play the VR. Yes, everyone is happy that you get to play the VR. Thank you for asking. Being so awesome. See you later. You want me to close the door? Yes, please close the door. Thank you. <laughs> Oh gosh! Okay, got it. So, uh, how how uh, how much time do you typically take to repay the investor? Got it. So, one of the questions that you should be asking: remember, you have to diagnose before you can prescribe. 
you don't know what problem that you are you solving the person's problem let's pretend that you're, you're talking to an individual they could be older they could be younger they could be many different things but let's just say that they say well i don't need the money for 15 years you in your brain you're concerned about oh i gotta get them their money back fast i gotta get them their money back fast i got they, they're not gonna say yes unless i say it's got to be eight months one year two year three years they're not gonna say yes well you take the time this is why it's an investor identity interview because when they say you know hey i, I don't need the money for you know 10 years awesome um sometimes i'll follow that up with something very simple karen like Okay, cool. Could you tell me about the last five investments that you've done? What what has been like the average return? Oh, well, my 401k hasn't been doing so great. Oh, really? I'm sorry to hear that. What do you mean? Well, I've only gotten about three, three and a half percent over the last, you know, four or five years. Understood. Hmm. I don't know if this makes any sense, but would it be okay if I doubled that? Like if I just doubled that three and a half percent? And then you got the money back in 15 years, like when you needed it, would that be okay? Do do you see the difference there, Karen? It's not about what is their problem. Solve their problem. Your problem, yeah, you, you may need access to their resources, but solve their problem. That's my point. That's what's missing. It's not like how, so see, there is no quote unquote how typically there is not there there is there's not a typically okay. that that's really what i'm trying to 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 drive home here all right let's see what else we got uh miss the blah 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 i needed to watch just a few more classes i was jumping ahead of myself no problem uh J- justin i can't say your last name i'm sorry do you ever offer a lease option to buy uh no. So when we're, we're, when it comes to a short term rental, I'm always going to start with a just a basic lease. As soon as you start talking and adding an option, uh, you're now crossing a line that begins to get blurry for either the 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 owner of the property, etc. Now, with that being said, I have other tools at my disposal. Uh, that doesn't mean I don't want to buy the property, Justin. I just don't use that tool because that tool makes things complicated and I want to keep it simple for them. So I'll still lease, but instead of saying using an option, which also takes money out of my pocket, by the way. So I've got to take money out of my pocket to give them an option when in ult- when ultimately do I really want the option or do I just want to be in the loop in case I'm ready to buy or want to buy the same building. Unless I actually know I'm going to exercise the option, I don't see a need to 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 stop that unless they have some sort of immediate need for that for that option deposit. I don't want you, the entrepreneur, to take capital and put it in a dead space. I'd rather you use it for furniture, fixtures, equipment, or something of like that. What does that mean in this case? Just use a first right of refusal. Hey, I'll lease it for three, four, five, seven years, whatever. I just want a first right of refusal. If you get an offer, let me know. If I say no or if I can't match it, go ahead. But I want to know. I want to be in that conversation. I'll do that all day long because that doesn't cost me any money. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) At all. Um, And it's way more efficient and effective. And it doesn't muddle the conversation. Ultimately, yeah, do I want to buy a property or many properties? Sure. That's exactly my point of using a three-phase system. Um... Uh, sorry, I was trying to remember what we're talking about. Oh, yes. So, which kind of leads into what we're talking about tomorrow because it's like, how do I get the landlord to say yes to this stuff? So, hopefully that makes sense. Um, so, no. And and the other thing you said there, Justin, is you said, do I offer? So, again, from, from a negotiation position, I'm rarely going to offer a lease option. And if I do offer a lease option, you better believe I've got something else. That's the small ask, okay? That's going to be the small ask in some way, shape, or form of what I'm willing to do. Uh, Olympia, you are welcome. What is IMTD? Investor Marketplace Team Deal. 
And Ahmed is here, short-term rentals rock. Uh, what is this, Susan? I love that you are doing this and still stop to acknowledge your family member. Thanks for keeping it real. Nope, hey, Susan, I am at home most days, sometimes more days than they probably want me to be at home. But hey, this is the life I designed. <laughs> Welcome. So uh, yeah, they're, they're, they're here. They're, they're, and what's funny is that no matter how many times you tell them, like, look, daddy's working. Okay, I just want to, oh, whatever. Come on in. Anyway, uh, Susan, <laughs> you know how it is. I might have missed the part about where do you find the investors. Got it. Uh, well, I didn't specifically go like find them here, 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 and here. But what I did say, Scott, was very clearly that often because we have a misconception of who we think the in investors are, we think they're hiding. And they're not hiding. They just look like you and I. If you go into Starbucks, any Starbucks, right now, I promise you there's a few million dollars of investable capital sitting in that Starbucks. Assuming people are there and they're, well, you have to exclude the workers <laughs> in most cases. And yeah, there's a few million dollars of investable capital sitting in Starbucks. That's what they look like. That, and that's the challenge is that in our brains, we think it's some person in a suit or a tower, by, I don't know, sitting behind some massively large desk or something. And um, that's just not the truth. And that, 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 by the way, which is part of how I started uh, just wearing jeans and a T-shirt because getting all dressed up with PowerPoints and slide decks and all this, that's intimidating to people. Uh, that and. I don't even like wearing a suit anyway. <laughs> so um, when you show up to Starbucks in a jeans and a t-shirt, you're just a normal person. You're not a salesperson. And that's also important to understand. Anyway, uh, so hopefully that helps, Scott. Let me keep going. Yes, Susan, that was so real. Loved it. I'm not sure what you're referring. Oh, you're talking about my daughter again. Yes, um, one of them is on a field trip today and uh, the other's in college. I don't know seen her in forever and then uh the other two they they're playing the vr because that was clearly the most important thing necessary today brenda dear oh, <laughs> this is awesome no one has ever called me dear obj kenobi and i love it we got maybe we should get some t-shirts anyway obj kenobi i'm pretty fired up uh just because you taught it doesn't mean they learned it. What do you mean? I I, I learned as a teacher. Um, oh, just because you taught it doesn't mean they learned it. Yeah, totally understood. I learned that as a teacher. Thanks to your teaching style, I see the value in short-term rental first before I purchase real estate. Thank you. Oh, wow. Brenda, and you're a teacher. Thank you. I. <clears throat> sorry, you make me all kind of emotional. <clears throat> I love that a teacher says that a, about me uh right there because that's cool and because i think that's the that's the entire game right there you know is transferring the stuff that we know to other individuals so that they can take action on it not just ooh look at me and all this other stuff i could care less about that stuff but people ask me all the time you know they they need to see things and uh, anyway I just want to put it in a way that you can use it. I, I'm not, yeah, I want you, all of you to own real estate long-term. And knowing what I know about owning real estate long-term, I also know it's better for you to start, not with a 30-year commitment, but a 12-month one. Not with 200,000 or 50,000 or whatever, how many ever thousands it is for you to buy, but with a lease, and some furniture and learn to screen people first learn to screen people figure out who it is you actually like serving this way first before you've got your entire life savings at risk then scale that come back for day four we're going to talk about how to go from one short-term rental to five to ten to more because see what what i want to see and, and and if people have been asking me, Jay, why are, you, why are you doing this? What's going on? Well, here's what's going on. 
three years ago. Um, yeah, three years ago, I took a group of individuals through a process, and many of those same said individuals now earn seven figures. Period. I want to create more people like that. I haven't done it in, in three years. And we're working with some people now who should become that. And I want more. This gets me excited. I can, can I go and do? Will I go and do? I intend to go and do more business? Sure. But many years ago, I learned I get way more enjoyment from watching someone else understand these concepts, put them into use and go out there and crush it because it is our misconceptions that are holding us back. And Wall Street has no reason to break it down in such a way to help us understand. They don't get paid for that. They get paid to keep it complicated so that we give our money to them. And then they get to charge us fees and tell us why we don't have any money. When we're all intelligent enough, we can play any game if we're just taught the rules. And for most of us watching today, like, I don't know how old you are. That's why I'm saying that. Um, like, if you were born after, on or before, yeah, if you were born after 1971, the rule, you were never taught the rules. And everyone before, born before 1971 they were, money had different rules to it. And we weren't taught how to play the game. But yet it's we, we've been asked to play, keep playing the game and never told the rules. And what I want to do, what cash flow diary, the reason we're here is that I feel like I got very fortunate in understanding some of the rules. And we do our best to bring more people with us. I don't know if I shared this yesterday, but I've, I've already I've been down the I'm retired thing. Yay. I did that already. I did my super fast car. It was an Audi S8. It was awesome. Only because I didn't fit in the Lamborghini. <laughs> this is more fulfilling. Bringing more people with me. Teaching. Educating. Doing it. Not like your economics professor. Teaching you about something they've never done. Anyway, or did 10 years ago. This is every day for me, short term rentals, even right now that, that, you know, and we'll say this. I'll say this more tomorrow on the next day. But I always want you to remember this as we sit here, as you see me, you don't see me stopping to pick up my phone and talk to my guests. You don't. I mean, and I promise you, somebody had trouble with something. Somebody always has trouble with something. when you have enough of them. Somebody's always having trouble with something. But you don't see me stopping to do that because the system and the team continue to run. And that's what I care about. The system and the team. That's the individuals who want to build those types of things. That's why you come here. Because we'll show you step by step as we do it right along with you. And as you get to do it with other people who are in the same stage as you. That's what we do. And we're doing this week training to help people get ready to to they, they said you wanted to make more money this year you wanted to lose weight i can't help you with lose weight i can help you with make more money that i can do <laughs> so we're, we're helping you get ready because see as we get towards the the end of the week we're going to begin to talk to you about what it is and how we help people and what that looks like and what that entails, because this is a transformation process. It's not a one time event. It's not books and, and, and videos. It takes more to create transformation. It takes accountability on, on a scale like you're like you have no idea. And these are things that are missing. It's not a lack of information. You are an intelligent human. There's a library and Google knows everything between those two things. It's not a lack of information. Accountability. Who's holding you to it? Is it too comfortable? Do you have to do it? For most of us, the answer is no, we don't have to. You're going to eat today even if you do nothing. It's a nice to have. I want to have. Maybe one day I might. And what's awesome is that because there are so many people who have that, 
for those of you who actually take the action, man, you end up in a completely different space than you've ever imagined yourself being. And these are things that in my pedigree, there's nothing. We didn't have these types of conversations. So because of technology, it gives me the ability to, to work around my weaknesses. ADHD, and believe it or not, I'm an autistic person. It gives me a way to work around my weaknesses so that I can still do my best to be a contributing member of society. And this is what we do. So today was all about raising capital. And the challenge is, is that most people think it has something to do with how long, what do I offer people in terms of interest rates, returns, and all those types of things. And what I've discovered, street, meet in the seat, belly to belly, table at the kitchen table, if you will, solve their problem. That's why they'll do it. I'm going to get the rest of these questions, and we'll kind of go from there. Um, uh, do, 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 do. Um, <laughs> uh, missed four ways to find investors. Got pie. Oh, got it. So to, what you want to do is begin to attract them to you, Bob. So when it comes to attracting the investors, it's uh, you. You ultimately you're producing content. The medium is what changes, is what I was saying. So uh, if you produce a blog, then that can be written. Our blog has a lot of video, and it's also written, and it also has audio. Because, so, again, I've, we cover all the modalities. That is, like, intentional because I know that's true. Um, the, then you So, which also is the other thing. So it's either you're going to do something written, you're going to produce an audio like a podcast, uh, maybe video like YouTube. And then what I was saying is my favorite way, because everybody can do this one, um, you can play a board game with people. Cash flow 101. That, that's it. The people bring their resources and their problems with them. And then you just have to be willing to uncover what their problems are and then learn to solve their problem creatively, quote unquote, with what you have, with what you're doing. Um, we'll hear one way. What? Will I hear one way you said can find Will I hear one way you said can find the investor early? I'm sorry, Ruth. I don't. If you want to retype that, I will gladly answer it. I just, I have no idea what that is. Karen, I love that you want to leave such a gracious and generous legacy, Jay. Thank you, Karen. I so appreciate your willingness to share and care. Thank you so much. You are quite welcome, Karen. Um, I was also very lonely at 38 and retired. To be, if I'm being transparent, it was not a good time. <laughs> okay, so um, I've learned. I'm done. I'll do this. <laughs> this is way better. Oh, uh, Vu, excellent. I'm ready to rock and roll. Glad to hear it. The party is all here. Thank you, Jet. Je, je, let me know if you like to see. Yes, Megan has got the worksheets. Oh, my water bottle was flashing. <laughs> mm. See, there it goes. It's flashing right there. Tell me, I gotta drink more water. So I like it. Um, I'm scrolling, 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 scrolling. Okay, cool. I think I got all the questions. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, you know what your homework is. We want to know what did you learn? Because uh, yeah, what did you learn? Because I don't know unless you tell me. What did you learn? You're gonna post that. It's all up in the units. If this was your first time and you missed yesterday, go back up into the units. I think it's unit five. Unit five is sitting right there waiting for you to go through and uh, consume all what we call the delicious goodness. Uh, tomorrow, we are going to be talking about how to get the landlord to say yes. Like, yes <laughs> to you. <laughs> Uh, so that way we're able to get through that process because uh, I know that's where some of you are stuck. We're going to talk about that and what that looks like. And at the end of the day, you're going to have the words you need to, to make that happen. Those of you who want to make sure that you are eligible for the giveaways coming up on Friday, I'll say that again. For those of you who want to make sure that you are eligible for the giveaways coming up on Friday and you want to maximize your chance to enter and win, you share, you like, you comment on every video, on the homework up in the units. You make sure that you are here tomorrow. 
you turn in your homework. All of those things gets you points for the prizes. Um, but to be honest, you do realize that the real prize is the new skill set you gave and what you get to do with it. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, man, because that's the that's where it gets exciting. So nonetheless, um, ladies and gentlemen, I appreciate your time. I appreciate your attention. I hope we have been of service today because it's been fun talking to you guys. I look forward to talking to you soon. Until next time.